An essential piece of your supplier management program is knowing how to manage changes to your critical supply chain. One of the key important factors is having the ability to detect and be aware of a change that could occur in your critical supplies. A way to accomplish that is to have change management notification agreements with your critical suppliers or acceptance testing when material is received in-house so that you have the ability to detect critical change. Once you're made aware of a change, the next critical step is to determine if there's any impact to your product or processes. This can be achieved through brainstorming and a risk and impact assessment with all of the key stakeholders in your company. That would include quality assurance, regulatory, engineering, design, purchasing, all of the above so that you can have a comprehensive evaluation of the risks of the change to your product or process. Once all of the impacts of the change of the critical supply are identified, it's important to go through each one to determine if there are any risks that are undue or unnecessary to your process. If there are risks and they meet an unacceptable threshold, the important piece is to ensure that you have assignments and a plan to mitigate those risks. Once those risks are identified, you have to determine if there are any validation or verification um, activities that need to occur, occur to ensure that your product or process is not affected. Once you've identified all of the risks that need to be mitigated, make assignments and document the implementation of everything you've done to mitigate those risks. The most important thing here is to show the regulatory bodies that you have performed your due diligence, that you have closed any open loops on any concerns that you have with this change and how it may impact or affect your product or process, and document all of this in your change management process. Lastly, you need to ensure that any re-verification or revalidation efforts are performed so that you can close the loop on that documentation as well. Once all of that is done, make sure that this information is disseminated through the right channels, through updating uh, procedures, regulatory submissions, purchasing specifications, anything that could have been impacted by the nature of the change. Any validation efforts in response to a critical supply chain should be based on the intended use of the product. For example, packaging supplier changes. If you have a material that is changing, there are several items that you need to evaluate. Sterilization, the raw materials themselves, the location of the equipment are all examples of items that you'll need to evaluate. You'll need to evaluate three properties of the packaging material the strength, the integrity, and the microbial barrier, which will comply with the ISO 11607 requirements. The three characteristics that are outlined in ISO 11607 include strength, integrity, and microbial barrier. Choosing a test in each of these categories will help you complete your validation. Strength can consist of two options, a seal peel test or a burst test. The seal peel test consists of a one inch segment from the seal that's pulled on a tensile machine. The value from this will tell you how much force it takes to pull the seal apart. The burst test uses air pressure and inflates the package to a burst pressure point. This will tell you how your package works in environments such as um, airplanes or in sterilizers for EO examples. The next area is integrity testing. The integrity tests consist of dye migration and bubble emission. The dye migration test is fairly simple and involves injecting dye into the package and evaluating penetration through the seal. The bubble emission test is similar to a burst test and inflates the package but in a solution, looking for air to transfer through the package materials as a failure. The microbial tests consist of two options, the F1608 LRV ranking test or the whole package aerosol challenge test. The LRV test consists of a swatch of porous material which is exposed to a aerosol of Bacillus atrophius. The value determined from this is a log reduction value that tells you what the penetration is of the organism through the packaging. 
The whole package aerosol challenge test consists of a package being hung in a chamber, exposed to an aerosol of bacillus spores, and then verified for penetration of the organism using a sterility test. You can choose from either of these options for the microbial integrity tests. By evaluating the results of these tests, you will be able to assess whether the change made by the packaging has affected the intended use of the product.